everybody, welcome to another episode of the Caregiver and Spoonie blog where literally I talk about my life and um, and I love it, to be honest. So, and you already know my name, my, my name is Jordan Banderas and just real quick, just a quick reminder, don't, don't forget to um, subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of the blog or the podcast as well. And thank you for all the uh, support that I keep receiving and all the uh, emails and everything. All, all, everything that you guys are doing to make this grow is great. It's happening little by little. It's organic. It's, or, it's growing organically, which I love. So on today's episode, we're going uh, we're gonna to be talking about why, it's, why it was like when I went to therapy. And the reason why is because, like I talked on the previous episode, uh, somebody stole my wife's pills that kind of like made me ha- go into this episode of PTSD where I started, I started having a flashback. So I was ready to kill somebody, the person that, that stole my wife's pills. So I talked to my wife about it. I told her what was going on and how I was having flashbacks. And then I I, I told her how I, I thought that she was my mom at one point. So I was going to react to that anger that, that I had towards my mom. And what happened in that situation is that she this she said, "Okay, I'm gonna get you help." <laughs> so she found a therapist. I was kind of hesitant because the reason why I was uh, hesitant about going to therapy is because my uncle and my mom they they had told me multiple times that I needed to go. No, 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 not that I needed that I had to go to therapy, but the way that they were saying it. They made it sound like I was crazy, so they put a bad, like a bad thing attached to therapy. So I didn't want to go, but because of what had happened, I was like, okay, if I if I want to take care of my of my wife, I need to get better. So I put that behind it, and I started going to therapy. It was hard. I'm not gonna lie. It was the hardest thing that I have ever done because. Once I started like remembering like everything that I have talked to uh, on on the blog episodes and and everything like everything that 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 I went through like you know you relieve your 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 past you relieve your trauma with therapy because you talk about it and the kind of therapy that I did is the EMDR which is eye movement this isn't this is this isn't can say that word dice no this is intention. Ah, can't say that word. It, uh, so I can't really say the word for what the D on EMDR stands for. And then the R is like, uh, I, I don't remember exactly. Sorry, I should, I should have looked that up right now. But I, I, I thought I knew. Like I have the name, but I can't really say it. And that's something that I'm working on from getting from here to here. And that's that's a lot of things that, that happened. And that's what therapy taught me. Like, uh, that uh, taught me because I'm being more expressive. Like, I'm, I'm finding myself. But like I was mentioning, it wasn't easy. Like, once I started, like, uh, getting deep into my feelings, I got scared. It was like a scary situation because I was like, oh, shit. Crap, I I I don't like this. Like I turn, I, I literally, literally, and this is what happened. And my wife can uh, uh, tell you, like r- literally after three months of therapy, I was like, I came home and I told my wife, like I'm done with therapy. Like I I I'm fine now. But I knew it deep deep inside I wasn't fine. It's just that I was getting deep. And I didn't want to find out anything else because I was getting scared. I was I was relieving that, and I didn't want to do it. So my wife asked me, like, "Are you sure?" Because the thing, well, the thing about this is that the type of person that I was, because I'm not like that anymore. I was very competitive, kind of like saying, like, "I'm number one. I'm better. I'm better than you." And and I was like that kind of person. Now I'm just competing with myself on game better every day. So it's completely different. Now I don't compete about with anybody. I'm just competing with myself. Like yesterday I did this, today maybe I can do more. You know, so something like that. So in in this situation that I'm trying to explain, I felt like I did everything. I was like, okay, I'm done. Give me my gold star. I'm done. 
<laughs> you know, I, I'm done. Like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Like, I'm done. My wife is all like, are you sure you're, you're done? I'm like, yes. And, and that's why I love my wife because she was like, I don't think you're done. And I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm done. And she's like, okay, I'm going to go to the, to therapy with you and talk to your therapist and see what he says. So they had a chat. Then they bring me in and they have a chat with me. They're like, are you sure you're done? And I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Like, I think I, I went through everything. Like I put it all in the table and my therapist is like, I don't think you have open up, not even to yourself. And I knew that they were right, but I didn't want to face it. I didn't want to face everything again because I was getting scared and I was getting angry. But my wife convinced me. She said, like, Jordan, you need to do this for yourself. My therapist said the same thing. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm not done. And I decided to keep going with therapy until I, fi until I finally realized when I was done. You know, when I was, like, ready to move on and, and start my own journey on my own. So what happened in, during this situation is that this is how it felt, like, for me, at least. It felt like, like it was, like I was commanding or not commanding, but like steering a ship in the middle of the ocean. And this storm, like this gigantic storm was brewing. And instead of, of like walking away from it or like, or like turning around, which is what I used to do. That's what we what we do as humans, like we see the storm and instead of going through it, we kind of like turn around and it's like, I want to face it. And that's how I feel. I know that when I talk to a few people about their issues, that's how they act as well. So I don't know if you act like that or you know somebody that acts like that or has reacted that way. But inst instead of me like turning around, which is what I tried to do, like my crew, my support group, my wife and, and the therapist are like, no, you need to keep going. So I, this is like I said, like how it feels for me. So I looked at the storm and I said, you know what? I can get through this because no matter how bad the storm looks like, no matter, I mean, no, ma no matter how uh, dark the clouds are, in the, uh, at the end of the storm, there's always sunshine. There's always a rainbow. So there's always beauty. Like above the, above the, like, oh, I can use this. So the, the clouds are like this. If you can see the video, like I'm closer to the light on the roof um, or on our ceiling. So the clouds are, are covering the light of the ceiling. Or, uh, the, uh, so the clouds are covering the, the, the light from the sun in this case. But once you go above the clouds, you're still going to see the sun. You're still going to see all that beauty of light. So I like I, what I'm trying to say in this situation is that you're going to, or in this case, I face my darkness. I face my storm. I face everything that, that had happened to me, everything that was said, done, the way that I felt. And it was an emotional roller coaster. I'm not going to lie. I am not going to lie because it was an emotional roller coaster. I remember uh, there were days that I was done with therapy and I came home and I was feeling angry. But one of the things with this particular uh, process of EMDR, the way that it worked for me or the way that I, I understood it, I don't know if, it's, if it was right, but at least it helped me the way that I understood it, is that you your brain reprocesses everything and then it's like this. It's like, okay, so you feel like this for this reason, but you should let go because of this reason. So I was always finding something that will help me process the trauma so I will be able to move on. And that's how therapy helped me. And the people that know that you need therapy, and I see this on, on, on TikTok videos and online, like, oh, therapy is not helping me, therapy, all, all of this, and I don't have the right therapist. But here's the thing, though. And I know how you feel because I have gone through that. Like, I wanted to quit therapy. 
but you also have to be open with yourself and open with your therapist. Because, like, when I, when my therapist told my wife, like, I wasn't being open enough, like, I wasn't open enough, and I, I know I wasn't, but I was like, I'm just going to tell you what you want to hear so I can be done with this. If you take therapy that way, it's not going to work for you. You, you. Unfortunately, you won't be able to get better because you're just going to sc- scrape, scratch the surface, but you need to go deep. That's what I had to do. That's when I realized like, okay, I had to, I had to face this storm. And there, I listened to this thing called Fearless Motivation on, uh, on iTunes. I think they, they have it in multiple platforms like Spotify or anything like that. One of the songs says, the devil whisper, you cannot face the storm. And the warrior reply, I am the storm. So that's how I took it. It's like, I see the storm and I'm like, you know what? I'm not afraid. I am the storm. I created this storm. I let this brew into whatever, or I let this grow into the storm that it is right now so I can control it. And I did. It took me a long time. I went to therapy for... I was, I got done last year, so a year and a half. I went to therapy for like a year and a half, something like that. Yeah, it was around like a year and a half, almost two years. Uh, so it was hard. I, I, and I'm not going to lie, like I said, it was hard. So I know that... I, I know that uh, people with PTSD, it's going to be hard because you don't want to face your fears. You don't want to face the trauma like with veterans. You don't want to fear. You don't want to face whatever you saw, especially if you were at the war. You know, if you were if you were in combat and you saw something so traumatic, you know, like a bomb. uh, You you guys hit a bomb by accident or or something happened. That trauma is going to stay with you. That trauma is going to, you're going to relive that trauma until you process it. Therapy helps. Uh, Talking about it helps. And that's why I also started this blog. Because talking about everything again, it kind of gives me a different perspective. I I change my perception of seeing things. And that's what what therapy uh, taught me. Because now, and like I said, it's not easy. I, I see things from different pers- per perspectives. Like if it, like if it was like a like if it was the same the first time that I hear about it or, or I see it, and that has helped me become a better person. Like I don't get like my wife thinks that she's gonna hurt my feelings, but I tell her like, uh, what did we do the other day? Like I always ask for feedback. Like this is the reason why I always I always ask for feedback. And, and my biggest critic is going to be my wife because I live with her. She sees me and she's kind of like a, she's still on a perfectionist stage. So she wants it perfect. And I'm like, okay, how can I make it perfect? And she tells me, it's like, and, and how I can improve in some things. And she's like, but I don't want to hurt your feelings. I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not hurting my feelings. I'm taking this as a learner. And that's what. That's one thing that, uh, that therapy helped me with. Become a learner of my own self. Like I have become a learner of my own self on how to improve myself to get better. So that's why I always ask for feedback. Because I want to know what, what I can do to improve myself. And in the meantime, for you to understand that you're not alone and that, and that you can get through this. Because I was able to get through it. So that's how uh, therapy helped me. Like I said. Um, therapy. I went through everything that I have talked to. On those epi- in, on the blog episodes. That's pretty much why I relive. In, in, in therapy. And it was hard. I cried. There were days that when I was driving back home. I was crying. I was like. But then I saw it. It's like. Okay. This happened. Because of this. Like when my when my grandpa died, I was like, I, I, when I reprocessed that, I was like, okay, I was eight years old, eight or nine years old. I couldn't save him, but that's not up to me to save. Uh, it's not up to an eight year old 
or a nine year old to save an adult. You know, like we don't have the strength, we don't have the knowledge. So, and even sometimes when you're an adult, you might not have the knowledge on how to save somebody. So you might see somebody drown. You might see somebody um, get shot. You might see all of these things, but then you're going to blame yourself. So the reason why I always say that therapy helps is because you're going to see, you're going to be able to process everything and see that it's not your fault. What happened in the past is not your fault. And you can take control of your present. Because the past is already gone. You can't blame for something. You can't blame yourself for something that happened in the past. When you don't, you no longer have control. So you learn from that experience. You learn from that experience on your present. It's like, okay, I did this wrong. But if I see somebody struggle this way, now I know what to do. So that's how learning and growing begins by understanding how what you could have done better. So now you're like, and, and not judging yourself in a bad way, but being like, oh, I could have done that. Well, I didn't know that at the time, but now I know. So if somebody is struggling, I know I know what I can do. So that's what you can do as well. But one of the things that I was trying to say, sorry, sometimes I go on tangents, but that's how I am. And, and that's why I ask for feedback. Like if you tell me like you go on too many tangents, you need to stay on track. I know what to work on because from my perception, I see I'm doing it right. And that's what I'm talking about. Like I see it from a different perception. So I can take feedback now before I could, before therapy, anybody will criticize me and I will, I will snap back. Now I see it from different perspectives, you know, but anyway, like I was saying, um, you have to be open with yourself. You have to open up so much. You you have to literally open like the deepest parts of your heart and mind. That's what happens with therapy. You have to be so open then then you're going to understand like okay, this is what happened. I can't I couldn't control that but now I know what to do like you learn something from that from your trauma and that's how you move on that's how at least I was able to move on so there are things that I know that a lot of you or maybe you know somebody that is going to a lot of things right now like anxiety and things like that and they might go to therapy and they might go uh, and they might take medicine which medicine is a it's good but Medicine at the same time doesn't treat the, the, the main issue because like I have said before, medicine is going to help you if there's a chemical imbalance in your brain. If you have PTSD and everything from a traumatic event, medicine might not do anything. It might calm you for a little bit, but the trauma still is going to be there. And that's why I realized with therapy, at least for me, this is just, a, a, this is a, about how I, about my experience. So I don't want you to take this personal or anything like that because everybody's going to go to different changes when you go to therapy. Therapy might work for you. There's so many types of therapies that there's a specific type of therapy that might work for you, but it might not work for me. The same thing happens with my wife, you know? So everybody's different. Everybody has a different type of therapy that might work for you or for whoever you know, you know? So... That's one of the things that you that you have to understand too. If you ever decide, if you feel in your heart and, and you know that there's something wrong and you decide to go to therapy and and work on yourself, you gotta understand that if one therapist doesn't work, you can try a different one. And a different one. Try different types of therapy. Don't just give up with one. EMDR work for me. But I know people that it doesn't work for them. So they try CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Sorry, that's my dog. Come on. So you, they try CBT or a different kind of therapy, you know? So that's, pre, that's pretty much my journey in regards to uh, therapy. How it helped me, how I faced it, how I faced uh, that particular period of my life. How I had to 
go through the darkness to find the light, literally, after the storm was over. Like, literally, the way that I felt on my mind is that there was all these storms and everything, but then once I able to control my feelings and, and process everything, like, the storm dissipated, and now all I see, it's light. Like, I see the sun. I know, Bruce. The sun. The sun. Like, I see the sun. I see the rainbows. I, I am able, I'm able to enjoy life more. Brucey, what's going on? You want to be on, TV, on YouTube? Come on. So, that's pretty much what happened. That's pretty much what happened to me. That's, that's, uh, and he's crying because we took the other dog to the groomer. So, the other dog is not, not here. So, he's crying. But like I was saying, that's how that's how therapy helped me. If you ever decide to go to therapy, or you or you know somebody that 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 needs to go to therapy, um, you might be able to share this message with them. And one of the things that before I forget, get a good support group, people that will support you no matter what. Like my wife, she supported me through all of this. And I owe a lot to her. Like she earned her sweat equity by by not giving up on me. That's why I don't give up on her. So if you are the one that needs therapy, get a good support group, good good group of friends. Um, if your family is a good support for you, use them, utilize them, talk to them. If your friend or somebody you know needs a support group, be for them. Be there for them. Tell them that you're there for them. That you understand what they're going for, through, um, and that if they ever need to talk to, because sometimes after therapy you need to talk to somebody, um, you're there for them, and you don't have to say anything. You just have to listen, because that's the thing. Is like sometimes we just need, uh, at least for me though, sometimes, and that's why I do this, because sometimes I just need to say it even though I already talk about it with my wife I say it again I, I I talk about my story and then I I I find something that that I I always find something new you know because I see it from a different perspective so I'm like huh maybe I should see it this way and then I, I apply that to my life and it works at least it works for me I don't know if it will work for you or your friend or whoever but that's the that that's what I wanted to share to, with you guys today. That's the episode for today. And like I said, I appreciate all the feedback. I appreciate the emails. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you taking your time and and uh, and and listening to my videos. And uh, there's just gonna be a few more episodes of the blog, and that will be pretty much my entire life. So probably like uh, uh, I would say like four to five more episodes. But, but then what I will do is that I will I will do the podcast three times a week because I really like doing this. So I hope you're 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 liking it. And if you know somebody that's struggling, don't forget to share, uh, subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on face, Facebook. If you want to share your story anonymously, you can send it to me at the caregiver and spoony at gmail dot com. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also email me, comment. Uh, send me a message on Facebook and like always I'll leave you with this always take care of yourself first or always take care of yourself have a great day